So last week we did a presentation on the ammonium nitrate black powder, or as we like to call it, alludium phosdex black powder. Now, if you didn't see that video, I'll put a link to it in the description so you could watch that and get a little bit more details on what it is I'm talking about here. The alludium phosdex black powder is 72% potassium nitrate, 5% alludium phosdex, 14% charcoal, and 9% sulfur. So it is only 5% ammonium nitrate, but that appears to make a pretty big difference. The charcoal is alder buckthorn. Now, when I did that video, I thought I used up all my powder, but I had a little bit left in my container, just enough for a handful of cartridges. Now, I had a bunch of people ask to see how that powder performs in a cartridge. In particular, I had a bunch of people ask to see 4570. Now, the reason why they want to see something like that, I think, is because they want to see how it does under an extreme amount of compression. Because with a full service charge of 70 grains in 4570, that is really, really compressed, especially if you're talking a 405 grain bullet. I'm sorry, not a 405 grain bullet, a 500 grain bullet. If it's a lot with 405, it certainly is going to be more with 500. Stands to reason, right? But just to be contrary, uh, what I did was use 5070. Principle still pretty much the same, though. So I had just enough powder to load eight cartridges with 70 grains of our 3F 5% alludium phosdex powder. As a control, I assembled a handful, I think it was five, with 70 grains of 3F Swiss and a 450 grain projectile from this Lee mold here. I would usually use 2F or even one and a half for a cartridge like this, whether it's 45, 70 or 50. But just to compare 3F to 3F, that's why I loaded it with 3F Swiss, just so we have an even playing field. So the firearm we're going to use for this test is my 68 Springfield trapdoor. And again, I wish I had more cartridges or more powder to assemble in a cartridge, but this was all I had left. So we're making another batch as we speak, but this is the best I could do for now. So here's our 5% alludium phosdex powder in a 5070 cartridge. Well, let me just see if I can't get a couple, three shots on here. I have five of them, and these are 70 grains of 3F Swiss with 150 grain Lee projectile. And we're at right at 150 yards? It was 150 at the mule, so it's like 148 right now. Oh, well, we'll call it 150. Okay. Now, I think the last time I chronoed these, it's right around 1,200. Uh, 1300 but it's kind of chilly today so i'm kind of thinking mid 12s okay if i could take a guess uh jake that chrono needs to be moved forward Is that better that's perfect you like that better yep okay here we go that was spicy wow 1392 shows what i know that's spicy was i Maybe I was 100 feet, was it 1,300? Was it? I don't know, I don't but know. that was pretty good, I would say. Yeah. 1,391.9. Hey, I couldn't see where it hit, could you tell me? No. I'll, be, I'll, I'll pay attention now. Oh, right behind it. Looks like you might have been off just the RCH to the right. That was 1,385. Spicy. Man, I tell you, Swiss does not disappoint. No. Thirteen seventy-nine. Boy, I wish I could see where I'm where I'm hitting. After I'm all out of ammo, the target camera will tell us. Yep. Low, 
right. Low, okay. Yeah. 1381. We're about, I don't know, a foot and a half away from his left foot. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna aim right at him then. Okay. Oh, <laughs> a little to the right there, huh? 1364. Wow. Boy, that Swiss, I tell you, it, uh, that is tough to beat. It's good stuff. Man, if our AN powder does better than that, I'm going to be, I'm going to be surprised. You don't think it will? Well, one of the things everybody wanted to see was if it would do strange things under a lot of compression. And 70 grains with a 150 grain bullet in a 5070 has a lot of compression. Okay. So we'll find out here in a second. Let me reset my chronograph. Yeah, so that averaged 1380. That's good. Wow. But this is 3F Swiss, where usually I would use two. two. Yeah. So that's probably why I'm gaining. Okay, so here is 70 grains of our 5% Alludium Fosdex. And uh, I hope, hope it holds together. Me too. Fourteen twenty nine. Your exhaling smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that fourteen twenty nine. That that bumps. Hey, did you see where I hit? I yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay. Well, it looked it looked high, like right over his left shoulder. Okay. Well, everybody everything, look okay. Everything looks okay. Okay. Nice. 1437. That was a solid hit. That was a solid hit. It smacked it real good, that hostage taker. Head moved about. Low right. 1417. Man, yeah, I think it's, I think it's more powerful. Yeah, I'd say so. Boy, that rocks. It didn't pick that up, did it? 1417.1. I don't think it did. I don't think it picked that one up. That's a solid hit though, huh? Solid. Now, uh, smack. I had a bunch of people tell me, like, oh, you know, Alludium Fosdex doesn't react good with brass. It'll make your brass brittle. I saw that. And, uh, well, that's something that Bob told me about. Mm. But, uh, I, I mean, I only loaded these up yesterday. Yeah. I, and I, it's, you know, 65 degrees or something. So I, I was seeing a bunch of people saying, you know, you don't want to have, have, any, have, have any of that in, touching brass for longer than, like, four days. Well... I thought I was out of it when we shot it all up the other day. I thought I was out of it, and I had a little bit left in my flask. All right. So that's what I loaded this stuff up with. All right. Well, let's see if we can't get another shot, because I don't think it read that last one. Fourteen forty. And it's this stuff smells different. It does. Not... It just has a different smell. I, I, I said it last time. It's like, I don't know. It has like a chemical smell, almost like a smokeless kind of smell. It's yeah. not smokeless, no. but it almost smells like that. Oh, low right. That 14, 18. Two feet away from his foot. I saw that. A little seems it could just be me, but it might be shoving these a little too fast, a little too fast. As I've never had 
I've, I've never had 50, 70 move that fast. It usually goes about 11 or 12, well, right? With 2F, with 70 grains of 2F Swiss and a card wad and the same projectile, mm -hmm. I thought the last time we clocked it, it was like I thought it was 1,300. High, I thought it was high 12s. Yeah, t high 12s, 1,300. Yeah. But that's okay. Well, this is 3F, just so I have 3F, yep. 3F comparison. Yep. Okay. I think I got it. Two more shots. Uh, Consistently right and yeah. low. 1433. How's everything look? Did it split? It, no, no, it's oh. not split. It okay. looks fine. But, okay, first off, high pressure. That primer's a little flattened off. Damn it. <laughs> but you look at the inside of it, man, it just barely looks like a black powder cartridge. Wow, that's interesting. Look at that. All right, I got one more. Well, make it a good one. I hope it. I can get lucky and at least land one more hit on it. Me too. Uh. 14.07. That was the lowest shot so far. So that stuff averaged 1426. Man, that's quick. I'll, I'll have to look through my notes, but I'm pretty sure that's a hundred feet per second faster on average. Wow. Now, I suppose somebody could say, well, yeah, but you know, that's the difference between 2F and 3F. But the other stuff, that was that was 3F Swiss. Yeah. And it was faster, yeah. no doubt about it. It's faster, but uh, yeah, this this stuff is more energetic. Mm. Absolutely, hands down, more energetic. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I see that 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 primer is flattened it's, off. Yeah, I mean, not like 44 mag flattened no, off, but but well, here, look at it compared to one of the Swiss ones. Maybe it looks the same. Uh, you know that 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 looks pretty flattened off too. I guess. And here's our Swiss. This thing still locks up just fine. It does not appear to be harmed in any way. And here's our Fosdex. Let me run a swab through it and see how it looks. Yeah, there's there's going to be some lead in there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but with it moving that fast, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's that's cooking. Man. Yeah, that's that's jamming, man. Yeah, big time. So it's uh, it's more energetic than the three F Swiss, even in a cartridge. Mm -hmm. That had a max spread of thirty three point two. Wow. That's. that's cool. I, I wouldn't call that wildly inconsistent at all. Nothing like no. the, the, the other powder that we made that we didn't show you guys. It oh. was a hybrid of black powder and smokeless. I remember that. And uh, I don't know that I'm going to show you guys because <laughs> it, was, it was... You think alludium... You mildly think, unsafe. You, you, think allu you think alludium Fosdex powder is dangerous. This stuff was uh, scary. Yeah, that, that stuff was... That was wildly inconsistent. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that stuff had a max spread of 32.2. And the Swiss... It had a max spread of 27.2. So the Swiss still had a tighter spread by precious little. Yeah. Well, I'd call that a success. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I wish I was shooting a little better, but the, I, I went with 70 on purpose because I wanted to see how it would do under serious compression. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if it would get wildly inconsistent like our hybrid powder. Yeah. So, uh, not our, the, the hybrid, but not mine. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't invent it. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I wish we it was did. A, it was a bad idea. It didn't work out. It's just, it's fine. Not, nothing exploded. Everybody survived. Yep. Okay. 
All right, then. Okay. So it looks like, according to this, and with our initial test with the two revolvers and the Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle, that the Illudium Fosdex Black Powder is worth about 40 to 50 feet per second in both the revolvers, the Southern Mountain Rifle, and our 68 trapdoor. So with 70 grains of 3F Swiss, we saw an average of 1380 with a max spread of 27.2. Very, very respectable. I did look through my previous notes. I haven't chronographed any 5070 with our new chronograph. This is with the old one. But with 70 grains of 2F Swiss, a 30,000th card while in the same 450 grain projectile, it's usually right around 1300, 1330, something like that. So we did see an increase from switching to 3F Swiss. Our 70 grains of 5% Illudium Fosdex powder averaged 1426.1 with a max spread of 33. Just shy of 50 feet per second increase, which is what we saw with all of the other tests we have run. So this stuff is more powerful and at the very least just as clean as swiss i think it's a little cleaner because the fouling is softer the alludium fosdex changes something when it comes to the fouling i'm not sure what it is but it's much softer than any other black powder fouling that i've ever experienced even the green pea charcoal recipe that is the soft fouling even this stuff is much softer than that it's really 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 interesting but again this stuff performs bitchin now while that is very fast and i've never had a 5070 projectile go that fast it didn't seem to be very accurate and i think we're just shoving that 450 grain bullet a little too fast what I have noticed with my trapdoor, I can't speak for all of them, is that it does really well if the ball or projectile is moving around 1150, 1200. That's what mine shoots best at. So having it go faster is cool, and it certainly proves the point that the Illudium Fosdex powder is more powerful than Swiss, but it doesn't really do much good if you can't hit your target over and over again. And I was sitting down there, I should have been able to hit that thing at least more than a couple times like I did, but uh, I can always make excuses for why I miss later. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button, consider subscribing, and if you did think it sucked, go make your own damn video.